In 646 BC, the Elamite civilization was shattered by Ashur Banipal, king of Assyria. The Iranian tribes, on the other hand, eventually defeated the Assyrians and for the first time in history formed a noble and tolerant world empire. The Achaemenid Empire. The best known representatives of the Iranian tribes who had migrated and settled on the Iranian plateau were the Medes and the Persians, speaking an Indo-European language ancestral to modern Persian. The Iranian tribes, while absorbing the millennia-old art tradition of the Near East, gave it a new invigorating flavor and value. This could be seen in the findings from the sites in Malik, Hassanlu and Ziviye in present-day Gilan, Azerbaijan and Kurdistan. In 559 BC, Cyrus, one of those rare leaders towards whom one cannot help but gravitate, unified the Medes and the Persians and initiated what had never been achieved before, the first tolerant world empire. The greatest symbol of Persian tolerance is evident in the Cyrus Cylinder, an inscription found in 1879 at Babylon, sometimes referred to as the Cyrus Bill of Human Rights. Tolerance was the key word in religions in this vast Achaemenid Empire. We all know how Cyrus freed the Jews from captivity in Babylonia so they could return to their homelands in Palestine. But this was not the only case. It happened later in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah as officers of the king who came back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. They did the same thing in Egypt and in Babylonia and among the Greeks of Asia Minor. In fact, they are the first example of international religious freedom that we find in the history of mankind. Because of biblical references to Cyrus, he was for centuries regarded as a model of a good ruler. Some Muslim scholars also find Zulkarnain in the Quran to be a reference to Cyrus. In celebration of his victories, Cyrus elected an elaborate royal park in his capital city, Pasagade, which became the model for Persian gardens. Since we had got two large rectangles, if we divided it with the vision of power, we got four parterres, or a charbah. This is one of those very important Persian discoveries in design, which the world has taken as a model, and was taken uh, eventually to India and to Spain, The most brilliant Achaemenid king in administration was Darius the Great, who brought the empire to its pinnacle.
In Egypt, he built a canal between the Red Sea and the Nile, anticipating the modern Suez Canal. At the same time, a great highway of 1,600 miles, stretching from Susa to the Mediterranean shores, was devised. Using this road, an efficient courier service, a forerunner of the Pony Express, was introduced. To regulate the social and economic life of the empire, taxes were systemized and weights, measures and monetary units standardized to simplify commercial exchange. In many ways, the Persian Empire was responsible for transmitting a myriad of cultural and technological achievements of the Near East to the Greco-Roman civilization. Darius the Great, whom Plato has praised as the lawgiver, established a code of law known as the Ordinance of Good Regulations, which were carried into all distant lands. In fact, at this time, a new word for law appeared in the whole Near East, the Iranian data, which was borrowed by Armenian, Hebrew and Akkadian languages. This papyrus from Egypt bears a legal text under Pharaoh Darius and this clay tablet is a contract for leasing of a house in the fifth year of Darius the Great's reign. Some 2,500 years ago, Persepolis was the sumptuous capital of the great Persian Empire, which according to Diodorus Siculus, was the richest city under the sun. Reminiscent of the vastness of the Persian Empire are the 23 groups of gift bearers from all over the empire depicted on the Persepolis reliefs. Here the dignitaries from all over the empire gathered for New Year's celebrations. Coming up to Apadana, the visitor is quite impressed by the size of the columns, which were about 20 meters high. Then, passing through the giant doors that were 18 meters high, he would enter the huge audience hall. His heart is beating faster and faster. He can see a forest of columns, the multicolor carpets on the floor, a huge ornamented roof. And finally, in the background, he would ultimately see the king himself seated on his throne. Unfortunately, in 330 BC, in an act of vandalism, Persepolis was destroyed by the fire kindled by Alexander and his Macedonian army. Thus, the richest city under the sun was no more.